So in the remainder of this lecture, we're going to describe how log linear models can solve many of these problems that we've just seen. So I'll first give basic definitions of log linear models. We'll then talk about how to estimate parameters in log linear models. And finally, we'll talk about smoothing or what is often called regularization in log linear models. This is a way of dealing with parameter estimation problems in very high dimensional spaces, i.e. in cases when we have very large numbers of parameters, we'll see how we can employ a very simple but highly effective method for smoothing or so-called regularization in these models. For, so first let's give a definition of the problem that we're trying to solve. So we're going to assume that we have some set of possible inputs call this script X. So for example, this could be the set of all possible uh, document histories, uh, W1, W2, up to WI minus 1. <clears throat> so I here can vary. This is going to be a sequence of words, the previous words in the document. This set of inputs is going to be the set of all possible document prefixes. That's clearly an infinite set in this case. We have a finite, okay, so we'll assume that this label set is finite. So this is uh, the set of possible, what we'll call labels in the particular context. So for example, this could be the set of all possible values for wi. Um, which would typically be equal to, to V if V is the vocabulary we're looking at. Maybe V union stop if in addition we have a stop symbol. Our aim then is to provide a conditional probability P of Y given X for any X Y pair where X is in the set of possible inputs and Y is in the set of possible labels Y. And we're going to see how log linear models build a model of precisely this form. So let's see how these definitions fit with our first example problem, the language modeling problem. So in this case, each x is a sequence of i minus 1 words. So it's a history. It's the previous words in the document. And each uh, y is a word wi that we're trying to predict. And of course, given the definitions I've shown you on the previous slide, we're trying to estimate the probability of y given x. So in this case, it's p of wi given w1 through wi minus 1. And again, script x is a set of all possible document prefixes, an, input, uh, an infinite set. And script y is the set of all possible outcomes. Uh, at any position, or all possible labels at any position. This is the set of words in the vocabulary. So a first key idea in log linear models is going to be the idea of features and what we'll call feature vector representations. So here's how this works. I'll first give the abstract definition and then we'll go through a particular example. So in general, a feature is going to be some function. So we're going to have features f1, xy, f2, xy, up to fm, xy. We have little m features. <clears throat> so each feature fk is a function that takes an xy pair as uh, its inputs. So x is again in the set of all possible inputs, y is in the set of all possible labels. Remember we're trying to model the probability of y given x. So each one of these features fk for k equals 1 to m is simply going to take an xy pair as input and map it to some positive or negative value, some, some real value. So I'm going to use this r symbol to mean the set of all possible real values everything, um, negative values like minus 5 or minus 4, positive values, value 0, and so on. So we could potentially map any xy pair to any real value. In practice, 
at least in natural language processing, the features that we often see are what are called binary features or indicator functions. And these features are going to map each XY pair to either 0 or 1. 1 is often interpreted as true, and 0 is in interpreted as false. Um, where we consider a feature to be asking a particular question about an XY pair. We'll see many examples of this in a moment. So we have these features F1 through FM. It's often convenient to concatenate them into a vector. Okay, so I'm going to use angle brackets to enclose a vector. So this is uh, one possible vector of dimension 4. The feature vector F of XY is the vector formed by taking the output of feature 1, then the output of feature 2, and right the way up to the output of feature m. So we now have an m-dimensional uh, representation of an xy pair, and this is often referred to as a feature vector. So that's all rather abstract. Let's go through a particular example illustrating these kind of definitions. OK, so again, back to language modeling. Each x is a history, w1 through wi minus 1, for example, this portion here. Each y is an outcome. For example, wi might be model. OK, it could be any word in the vocabulary. And here are some example features, and these actually capture the kind of um, features we saw in the, uh, when we considered this example at the start of this lecture. Okay, so f1 xy might be defined to be an indicator function. It takes the value either, equal, either 0 or 1. It takes the value 1 if y is equal to model and 0 otherwise. So this feature could potentially look at any information in x or any information in y. And in this case, it's a very simple feature that simply looks at the identity of um, the label y in this case. This might be referred to as a unigram feature because it looks at the single word and ignores all context, a bit like the unigram estimates we saw in trigram language models. Here's a second feature, f2xy. This is one if y is equal to model and wy minus 1 is equal to the word st statistical. Okay, so this is what you might think of as a bigram feature. So all I'm doing here really is replicating the kind of information we see in trigram language models, but we'll so soon see how we can go much further than trigram language models with this approach. The third feature, f3 of xy, is 1 if y is equal to model, if uh, wy minus 2 is any, wi minus 1 is statistical, and 0 otherwise. And so this is basically a so-called trigram feature. OK, so again, each of these features looks at an xy pair and returns some real value. These are indicator functions or binary features which simply return 0 or 1, depending on whether some question about the xy pair is true or false. Let's define some more features. OK, so here are some others. We could define f4xy to be 1 if y is equal to model, and wi minus 2 is equal to the word any. This is often referred to as a skip bigram feature. It's a bigram because it looks at two words, but it's a skip because it skips wi minus 1, so it's looked immediately to the word two words back ignoring the identity of the word one word back. And these features can be useful in some contexts. Here's another feature. This is one if the word being predicted is model and the previous word is adjective, is an adjective. Assume for the sake of argument here we have some deterministic function that looks at wi minus one and figures out whether it's an adjective or not. We have another feature which looks at the fact that y is equal to model and the previous word ends in the four uh, letters ICL, I C A L. That might be a strong indicator of the type of the previous word. We might have a feature looking at the fact we have Y equals model and the fact that the author of this document was Chomsky. 
Um, we have feature conditioning on the fact that y is equal to the word model and that the fact that the word model is not seen in the previous i minus one words. We have a feature which looks at the fact that y equals model and the fact that grammatical is seen in the previous i minus one words. And you can see that you could define many, many features of um, these types, which in every case, look at the label. Okay, so there, in fact, the features we, we see, for reasons we'll see shortly, always, in some sense, take the label into account. But they, in addition, consider some context, okay, some feature of the previous I minus one words, or some meta uh, feature of the data, for example, the author. It's important to think a little more about how we actually define these features in practice. So in the example I just showed you, we had this feature F3, which was one if this particular trigram, any statistical model, was being formed when we look at the XY pair and was zero otherwise. In practice, of course, this captures information about just a single trigram, and you would really want features which consider, in some sense, all possible trigrams, or all possible bigrams, all possible unigrams. And that's exactly what we do with one important caveat. What you would probably do in practice is the following. You would introduce one trigram feature for every unique trigram seen in the training data. That is, for all triples of words, U, V, W, seen in the training data, we create a feature, which is one if we have that trigram, U, V, W, and zero otherwise. So rather than having just one trigram feature, you might easily have a few million trigram features. And actually, there's no real harm in these models of having a very large number of features. Um, what have I done here? I've just been slightly careful. The number of this feature is going to be uh, defined as NUVW, where NUVW is just a, a hash function that maps each trigram to a different unique integer. Okay, So we've just basically indexed all of the distinct trigrams we see on our training data and included each one of those trigrams as a feature in our model. Notice key here is we do not include trigrams not seen in training data. One key reason for that is that there are simply too many. That would lead to a huge number of features, basically a, fe a number of features which is uh, basically v cubed, where v is the size of the vocabulary, and that's uh, way too many. And the other thing is, these unseen trigrams, as we'll see, we don't really have any evidence on which to estimate their parameters, and so they're really not worth including in the model. Okay, so when we see the parameters of a log linear model, we'll see that for each of these uh, different trigrams, we have a parameter. We'll see how to estimate those parameters from data, we only estimate those parameters for the trigrams that are actually seen in the training data.